Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at creating some cool wispy text in After Effects. So, let's take a look at the final result. All right, it's got some camera shake. I have no idea why. We're gonna be using a couple of third-party tools. First, we're gonna be using Particular 2, which is a great plugin for creating cool particles. You can find that at trapcode.com. We're also going to be using a couple of elements from Action Essentials 2, which is our collection of pre-keyed action stock footage and a bunch of really cool things, actually. So, if you go to the website, um, click on the products and you can take a look at Action Essentials 2. We're gonna be using the 720p version, it's HD, 99 bucks, and it has tons of different elements. And we're actually gonna be using a couple of these smoky, wispy elements in this tutorial. So, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna create a new composition, and I've really gotten addicted to this resolution. It's 960 by 360. I'll just do about 10 seconds and 24 frames per second. We'll click OK. And first thing we're going to do is uh, take the text tool here. We're going to click in here. We're going to type uh, anything we want. Video Copilot. Let's see here. And uh, we'll center it. Move this right here. By the way, we can show the title safe. So you can find the middle there. Now maybe scale this up a touch. Okay, perfect. By the way, the text is a little bit off-white, so if you bring up your uh, character tools, we want it to be, you know, a middle gray. We'll hit OK, so we'll close that. Next, what I want to do is bring out my two Wisp elements from Action Essentials 2. We have Wisp number one, this looks like that, and Wisp number four, which is a little thicker. And we're gonna take these two elements and we're gonna drop them into the comp. And while they're still selected, I'm gonna close the paragraph window. And then we're gonna choose Layer, Pre-Compose. And we're gonna move all the attributes and this is gonna be our Smoke Particles. Okay. And then we'll double click on it. And what we need to do is set this up so that both of these elements are exactly the same length. Now, now the first clip is about four seconds, but the second one is close to six. So we're probably gonna trim the second one down so that they're both four seconds. I also wanna change the comp settings to be a square resolution. So we'll choose comp settings, and we'll set this to 400 by 400. And we'll hit okay. And we also actually wanna make the duration eight seconds so that both of our clips will fit. Okay, so what I wanna do is take the first clip and scale it down a bit so that it fits inside the window. We basically want the particle to be right inside of this black area. So that looks good. Now we'll move forward to the four second mark. Zoom in here. And we'll take the second clip and we'll scale it down. Now, it's not started yet, so we'll slide over and it starts at about eight or 10 frames in. So we'll go ahead and trim the clip so that it starts at that point. And we'll scale it down here. And let's just make sure that it stays in the frame, and it does. So just move it over to about right there. And what I probably wanna do is feather out the bottom so that we don't have a sharp edge. Now I'll take the pen tool here, and we'll just draw a line, something like that. And then we'll hit M, and we'll choose Subtraction, so that uh, we're pulling that part away. And then we'll also go down to the Mask Options, turn up the feathering, you can hit F also. And we'll just move that up. Now, we may wanna just fade out the clip during the last second, so we'll hit T, click on the stopwatch for the opacity, and then move forward to the end, and set it to zero, so that we make sure that the particle fades out completely. And then again, we'll do it with a second clip and uh, fade that out to zero. 
Okay, so this is our particle clip that contains two separate elements. Now, this is a little bright, so I'm probably gonna go into the effects, curves, and bring the brightness of the clip down a bit. And maybe if I go to the alpha channel, because remember the clips are pre-keyed, so they actually have built-in transparency. And I'm gonna bring the alpha channel, which is the transparency, down a little bit as well. Maybe just keep some of the lower area. Looks good. And uh, our first clip, that'll probably be okay. And since it's a little bit bluer, let's also add a tint effect, which is at the bottom of the list there. We'll set this down to about 60% or so. Okay, so back to comp four, we have our smoke particle texture. So we'll close that eye off and let's add a new solid. Bam. Looks good. This is going to be particular. And we'll choose effect, trap code, particular. And we've got some cool particles going on here. Now, we want this to animate on. So, we're going to set this up in a few different ways. First, we'll go down to the emitter settings. We'll set the type to be a box. We don't want it to be just a point because our text is larger than just a single line. It's actually a little thicker. So we want to have a little bit more depth to our particles. We're going to set the particles per second to about 15. Very low number. And instead of the particles shooting out from the middle, we're going to turn the velocity down to zero as well as these other values just so that the particles, when they're born, they stay exactly where they are when they're emitted. So we'll move forward here, or I should say back, and let's animate the position. So we'll just click on the stopwatch for the X, Y, and Z. We don't need to use the Z, but if you wanted to do a 3D move, you know, you could. And we'll move forward to about four seconds. Um, or actually, let's go back here. Let's slide this over. So if we select the particle name, the position icon shows up so we can grab that and slide it over. So just outside of our text area. Then we'll move forward to four seconds, take that same thing, slide it over. So now we can see particles are being born. And instead of them being little dots, we actually want them to be references of this smoke texture video. Okay, what does that mean? I don't even know. Um, Let's uh, scroll down here a second. Let's um, go into the particle. It's very well organized. We're gonna set the life up to 10, just so they don't shut off prematurely. Okay, so we have a bunch of different settings here. We have a particle type as a sphere, but instead of those little dots, we wanna use a texture. So we could use the textured polygon, but we're actually gonna use just the sprite. Now, the difference between a sprite and a polygon is a sprite always faces the camera. So if we fly around the particles, it'll still be looking right at the camera. Whereas a polygon is like a three-dimensional um, plane that we can fly around. So in this case, the sprite should work fine. We're gonna go down to the texture tab, bam, and we're gonna select the layer. We're gonna use the smoke particles layer. And the cool thing here is we have a lot of different options for time sampling. Now, instead of using the current time, we're gonna use the split clip mode and we want the clip to play once. Now, it automatically sets the number to two and in this case, that's how many we're using. But if we had five clips, we could set that to five. Now, just be careful that you divide them evenly, otherwise it will interrupt them mid animation. So, make sure your comp is exactly set to half. Okay. So the particles are a bit small, so let's come down here and start playing with some of the settings. First, turn the size up, look at that, awesome. And we can turn up the size randomness so it's not looking exactly the same. And let's see, we'll scroll down here, maybe turn on a little bit of opacity randomness, we'll turn that up. And we could change the transfer mode to screen and that gives it kind of a nice glowing look or to lighten, which is kind of an interesting method for blending uh, images that you don't want necessarily to increase in brightness. So, you know, it's kind of a cool one. We can just experiment. Right now we'll try normal and we'll see where that takes us. 
Um, but this is looking pretty good. Now it looks like our particles are being born a little bit low. So what we can do is move it up a bit. Let's see. We'll select the particle name and we'll move this up just a bit. Now it's set to about 157. So we'll go to the end keyframe and we'll set that to 157 as well. That way it's a straight line. Now the other thing that we um, didn't do is we didn't animate the particles per second. So I'm going to click on the stopwatch for 15 at the first frame of the animation. Then I'm going to move back one frame, so page up, and set this to zero. So no particles, and then 15 per second. And then we're going to go to the last keyframe. We're going to add another keyframe for the particles per second, move forward one frame, and back to zero. So that way they turn on, they're born, and we're done. Now another thing that we want to do to give a little bit more randomness to these smoke elements is the rotation. So we'll bring that up and we'll turn up the rotation randomness right here. About 10 or 12, not too much, just a little bit so that they're not all exactly the same. I think that'll work well for now and let's animate our video copilot text to transition on with our smoke. So. We'll, uh, I don't know, we'll use a mask here. We'll select the text side. We'll choose subtract. We'll bring down the mask properties, animate the mask path. Then we'll move forward here. And then we'll slide this over. And actually we want that to be add. There we go. So it's basically animating on there. Now, I'm going to take the particular layer, hit F4, or toggle the switches, and set it to screen. And uh, I also want to just add a black solid to the background. And by the way, I usually add a black solid to the background because if I do a color correction or sometimes transfer modes don't work properly unless there's actual pixels in the background. So. Okay, let's go back to our mask and turn up the feathering. So I've hit F and we're going to feather it just a bit. And uh, that's looking pretty good. Another thing I want to do is add a little bit of a blur effect to the text as it's growing on. So the way we can do that is add an adjustment layer. We'll bring that down just above the text and we'll add a fast blur. We can turn that up a little bit with a distort turbulent displace. So that's a little bit off the list, but turbulent displace, which is kind of just a cool warping plugin. So turn the size down. And if you look at the text here, here, I'll put it on everything so we can kind of see that it just warps everything in kind of a weird way. So it looks good. And we want to animate the evolution so it kind of wobbles a bit. So we'll alt click on the stopwatch. Type time star 250. So that's saying time times 250. So as time goes on, the uh, value will increase and we'll get uh, a little bit of animation. So that's the idea there. Call this uh, blur. And let's put that just above the video copilot text. Now I also want to keyframe this on and off so that it just happens at a specific time. So we'll just go to the beginning here. Draw a keyframe, we'll hit M, and we'll animate the mask path till it's off the page, and we'll hit F and feather it um, a bit. So we don't want it to be too sharp, so we'll feather it out a bit. And then we'll hit U, and there's our two keyframes. So watch this, if we move them over, we actually blur that text out as it's uh, animating on. So if we moved it over even more, it almost looks like the text is sort of being diffused by the smoke. So it's kind of a cool way to uh, blend these elements together. Or is it? I don't know. You guys can decide. Now one last thing um, before the next step, since we're not nearly done. No, we're close. Um, I'm going to duplicate the particle layer. And instead of the smoke here, I'm going to go back to a sphere. 
and it's a bit large, so we'll scroll down. We're gonna make it about 1.5. And size over life. We want them to be small at birth, get large, and then shrink away. And we might even set the size back up to two, just so they're a little larger. And so now we have just these little particles. Let's turn up the velocity so they fly around a little bit. Let's see. It's just another little bit of detail, um, nothing too fancy. So they're being born, very good. Now I probably want to make the smoke a little bit larger. So we're going to come down here and uh, let's bring the size of these up a bit. Yes. We'll see what that gives us. Now it looks like some like random piece right here. So one of the things we can do is play with the random seed. So that just changes all of the particles and just gives it a new random seed. So if something weird is happening, just you know play with the settings until uh, until that goes away, or play with the settings until it gets worse. That's what I usually do, and it always works. Okay, let's go and add a new adjustment layer, and uh, we'll do a curves adjustment with a uh, tint and maybe a glow, stylize glow. So I'll shut the glow off for a second. We'll turn the tint down to about 20. And um, you know we just want to give it some nice contrast here. So something like that. And, you know we could do red particles or whatever. Um, and we'll do some blue particles. Sure, why not? Do like blue green particles. And we'll turn the glow on. We'll turn the threshold up. So see how it's all glowing out? Well, let's turn it up so only the bright areas get glow. And then we'll turn up the radius, is kind of like the blur amount. And uh, the intensity uh, looks okay. So this is looking pretty good. Now, like I said, we can play around with the mode in which the smoke blends. So right now we're using normal, but we could do a screen, for example, and that'll make it a little brighter as it blends together. We could try the lighten mode, which is a little bit darker, and we could even add a color correction to specifically to this layer to maybe brighten it up or make it blend a little bit differently. And that just creates, you know, another kind of unique look. And we could uh Brighten this up so that we get a little bit of more glow from that brighter area there. That's nice. But the smoke is just, you know, a really nice element, and especially when it's blended together, just gives us a nice organic look. One last thing, if we hit U, we could alt click on the particles per second and do like star two, and they'll make twice as many particles. And you know, if you want there to be a ton of particles or a few particles, um, that's a quick way to uh, you know add more without having to uh, do a lot more keyframes. Let's see. And finally, I might just lower the uh, saturation using a tint effect. Maybe just punch it down a little bit. Oh, by the way, for the particles that are just small, let's set the life to about uh, I don't know, two seconds or maybe three seconds so that they're not on for very long. All right, very nice. And uh, just to show you, this is like the first example that uh, I put together where the smoke is a lot softer and uh, more magical, I think, like an iPad. Um, anyway, um, not really. This is obviously much better. Um, all right, well, I thought it was a, a cool technique to demonstrate, as always, you know, uh, take these uh, take these concepts and, and try to build some of your own unique, uh, interesting ideas, um, you know, especially with action essentials. There's so many elements and water elements and fire elements. I'm sure if you were to use those as particles and use very interesting particle systems, you could really create some, uh, some cool stuff. So have fun, guys. As always, I'm Andrew Kramer. And we'll see you next time.